Okay, today we're going to look at some more examples of the uh, applications of systems of equations. Uh, we started to look at them yesterday, saw one particular situation with the uh, action in documentary DVDs that this person has, and we were able to answer through uh, all of the questions before we ran out of time yesterday. So let's take a look at another one. Okay. This one simply says, let X and Y represent the measures of a pair of supplementary angles. One angle is 36 degrees less than twice the second angle. What two equations can be formulated from the problem situation and solve the system of equations to find the measures of the two supplementary angles. Okay, well, just like yesterday, don't let the amount of words or the presentation of the problem or anything like that scare you off. Okay, these problems are not uh, as difficult as they seem in most cases. The key is to break it down into small bits of language and see if you can understand just the little phrases as you go through sentence by sentence by sentence. Okay, well this one doesn't quite lead us down the, the road as much as the last example did. Okay, but the same type of situations, the same progression applies. Okay, and if you'll remember, okay, well, let's just flip back and look at it. Okay, it started off by asking us what are the two variables and what should each one represent. That's not a bad place to start with any system of equations, whether they ask us that or not. Figure out what our variables are going to be, because if they're going to ask us to solve or, or write equations, like we're asked right there, we're going to need to know what our variables are going to represent so that we can plug them in correctly into the problem. So that's not a, a bad place to start. Let's see if we can figure that out. Okay, um, This one's going to be pretty easy to identify our two angles or our two variables because it comes flat out and it says, okay, two supplementary angles and it doesn't really give us the measurement of either one of them. Okay, so it'd be pretty easy for us just to say something like, um, if I can write on this, Okay, so we're just going to assign a couple of variables. I'll use X and Y because that's typically what we're used to seeing uh, when we're writing our equations, X's and Y's, but you can use any variable that you want. Probably a better idea to pick on X and Y since those are the values that we're going to use on our calculator uh, if we should get to a point where we can graph it in the calculator. Okay, so let's see if we can get through the, uh, the sentences here. Let's see if we can get through the bits of information in this problem and build an equation out of it. Okay. Oh, I didn't even notice this. I was sitting here pretending like I was making up values for the variables and making up the variables, and it said, let X and Y represent the measures of a pair of supplementary angles. Now, before we get too far down the road, okay, uh, they've thrown this term at us, supplementary angles. Okay, anybody remember what it means to be supplementary? Those of you that are in, yeah, those of you that are in geometry this year ought to, ought to remember this well, okay? And it is supplementary angles are two angles that add together to equal 180 degrees. That's exactly right, okay? Now, if, they, if they're supposed to add together to equal 180 degrees, does this sound like there's an equation in there? Some things are adding together to equal 180 degrees just based upon the, the word supplementary? To me, it sounds like there's an equation in there. We've got two things that are going to add together to equal 180 degrees. Okay, well, that sounds kind of important. What is going to actually add together to equal 180 degrees? The two angles that they're talking about. That's what supplementary angles do. So that sounds like we got an equation going right there. One of the things they just said was x plus y, angle 1 and angle 2, are going to add together to equal 180 degrees. Now let's see if we can figure out uh, what's going on with the other part of this. One angle, okay, one angle. Uh, does it say which angle? Just says one of the angles, right? Okay, so we can pick on either variable that we like. Now, what's this word coming right there? Is, what's is mean? Equals, that's exactly right. Okay, so one angle, and then we're going to get an equal sign. Okay, let's think about which angle we might want that to be. We want our problem to say X equals everything else, or would it be better for us if it said Y equals everything else? I think it would be a little bit better if it said y equals. So when they say this one angle and don't tell us which one, I think it's probably to our benefit to make that one the y. That way we don't have to mess with the equation when it comes down to programming the calculator. Now what about this angle? 
what does it say over here? I wrote on the top of it, so I can't see it. 36 degrees less than. 36 degrees less than. What happened there? Subtracting, okay? Now, with subtraction, we have to be careful kind of what we're doing. Okay, so we're subtracting 36 from something. Okay, so we got to kind of figure out what it's being subtracted from before we can actually do the subtracting. If it was an addition problem, we wouldn't worry about it because it doesn't matter whether you have one thing plus another thing or the other thing plus the first one. You can go in either direction. The subtraction is kind of important though. 36 degrees less than what? Twice the second angle. Twice the second angle. What did they just say there? Yeah, we got a multiplication and it's two. Okay, and we've got one of the angles we're using is y, so the other one must be the x. Okay, this says 36 degrees less than double whichever angle that is. Okay, so there you go. You've got your system of equations, and it says what two equations can be formulated from the problem situation. I believe we've got it. We've got two angles that are supplementary to each other, and we have one angle that is 36 degrees less than double the other angle. I believe we've got our system here. B says to solve the system of equations to find the measure, uh, the measures of the two supplementary angles. Well, one of our equations is in good shape. Slope-intercept form right there. Okay. The other one, however, is not yet in slope-intercept form. Y e x plus y equals 180 degrees. We would like this y to be isolated. Okay. So what are we going to do? What are you going to do with x? Yeah, we're going to send it to the other side of the equal sign, and we will do that by subtracting that x from both sides. That'll leave you with y equals, and if you wanted it in slope-intercept form, the negative x would come first and then the positive 180 would show up right there. Okay, so there you go. You've got your two equations. Now all we have to do is take it to the calculator and let's see what we think about this intersection. Okay, so I'll pull up the calculator. 2x minus 36. And what was the other? Negative x plus 180. Remember, when you're doing a negative on your lead term, that's this little little bitty guy down here next to the decimal point. Okay, not the minus button, but negative x plus 180. There we go. And let's have a look at the graph. Wow, my window is pretty messed up. It's not in standard form. And I can see one of the lines, but not the other. Okay, so I'll go zoom standard. Option 6 in the zoom menu. And now I can't see either one of them, okay? So that didn't help out a whole lot. Let's zoom out, see if we can't find the lines. So, oops, I hit the wrong thing. Zoom, option three for zoom out. And press enter. There goes one line. Calculator is done, and I do not have the other line again. So I'm just going to push enter again because the zoom is still active until you make the calculator do something different. And now we can very easily see the intersection. Okay, so the only thing to do now, second calculate, option number five for intersect, move our X cursor out near the intersection. As always, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just gotta be close. Enter, enter, enter. And we find an intersection at 72 and 108. Calculator says X is 72 and Y is 108. Are these the values of the angles or do we have to plug these in or something like that? Well, what did we assign X and Y to? We said X and Y was the values of the angles. Actually, the problem set it for us as well. Okay, so there are our two angles, 72 and 108, and always a good idea to read back on the problem, and let's see if our answer makes sense. Is it a reasonable solution or not? Okay, it says that X and Y represent the measures of a pair of supplementary angles. 72 and 102, do they add together to equal 180 degrees like the problem says they should? And you, they do. 
Okay, so that's a check. Good. One angle is 36 degrees less than twice the second angle. Well, let's see. I don't think we got that part right. Okay, on second thought, looking at it, it, it works out okay. If we take X, which is 72 degrees, and we double it, we get 144. If you subtract 108 away from that 144, we do in fact get 36 degrees left over, and that's what the problem said to do. So we've got good values for our system. There's our solution. Okay. Does anybody have any questions over that? Okay. Now, there's other types of problems, something I told you at the beginning of the day yesterday. Okay, and this one is, is what they call a rate problem. Okay, two other types of problem situations that can be solved using systems of equations are rate and mixture. Rate and mixture. Okay. Uh, rate problems. You may want to jot this down in your notes. Okay. Set up two equations in the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus p. Well, that's nothing new. We've, we've kind of been doing that. That's kind of been our goal as we've been setting up our problems. Okay. And then we can manually solve by substitution, which is something that we've, we've uh, talked about doing. Uh, it just depends on your personal preferences. And, of course, solving by calculator, which has been our method of choice if we have an option we, we like to use the calculator if we can accurately get the information in the calculator then the calculator should accurately give us an answer back okay. so let's see what we have here question three says the green grass incorporated charges a flat rate of fifteen dollars per hour for lawn services their main competitor s g lawn care charges an additional fee or an initial fee pardon me of thirty dollars plus ten dollars per hour complete the table below okay now in this table you can see that um, they've got columns for each of the companies one of them says process and the other says cost process column it, it kind of depends on the the problem or who's writing it some people like different types of things for the process but typically the process is like what type of math did you do in order to get the answer and then the answer is typically what shows up in a column like cost okay so let's see what we have here now the green grass incorporated they say they charge a flat rate of fifteen dollars per hour for coming out okay um but they don't charge anything extra, okay? No, no uh, service fee or service call or anything like that, okay? So basically, our process for Greengrass Incorporated is going to be to multiply $15 times uh, straight up however many hours they end up working. And that'll be the same thing all the way down the chart here. Okay, and uh, I guess technically if we wanted to get this exactly right, the 15x would go down there. Okay, that's the process down here at the x row. And up here it would be 15 times 1, 15 times 2, 15 times 3, and so on, coming down the chart. Okay, that would be the process. That would give us our total costs of $15 for 1 hour, $30 for 2, 45 60 75 and we could do this for as long as we needed. Okay. Now, SNG Lawn Care, they're a little bit more complicated because they charge an initial fee, a service charge, okay, a fee for them just to show up. Okay. So what that means is they're getting their 30 bucks no matter what, and then they're going to add something to this. Okay. What are they going to add to this? $10 per hour. Okay. So we need to reflect that $10 times however many hours they end up working. Okay, So if you wanted to fill in the gaps up here, it would be 30 plus 10 times 1 hour, 30 plus 10 times 2 hours, and so on down the chart. Okay. Then the total cost was well, just kind of figuring out what these what this is actually doing. 30 plus 10 times 1 is 10, so that's 40. 30 plus 20 is 50. And it probably doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this chart is going to go up by tens each time. And we can figure out 
any amount we want to know just by plugging in the number of hours. Okay. All right, so we completed the table, and I believe we got some more questions on the next page. Everybody got what they want off of this page? Okay, let's take a look. Use the pattern in the table to write an algebraic expression to represent each company. You want to know a secret? You already did that. We've already written an algebraic expression that tells us about each company, and we did it by looking at how each line moved coming down that chart. Okay. So uh, based on that, the Greengrass Incorporated, their equation is 15x. So if we say Greengrass, their equation is y equals 15x, where x is the number of hours that they worked and y is the amount of money they get paid. Okay. On the S&G Lawn Care, 30 plus 10x. y equals 30 plus 10x. y is the amount that they get paid, $30 is their service fee, and 10 times the number of hours that they end up working. So if you can build the chart, which I think everybody is, is okay at, okay, we're pretty good at getting the chart. If you can build the chart and in the end make a determination of how each line is moving from one line, one line to the other, then you have the equations that you need right there, straight out of the chart. Okay. C says extend the chart to find when the charges for each company are equal. Verify this by finding the solution to the system of equations graphically and algebraically. Guys, I don't particularly care if you, uh, if you like to use the chart, which it's saying to do. I don't care if you like doing the problem algebraically, which they say also to do, and they say to do it graphically. Okay? All I want you is to have one method that you are really good at and you can use on no matter what kind of problem you come across. Okay, well, we have two equations here. I don't see any reason for us to continue this chart to try to find out where they finally match up, which it may not take many more lines. I honestly don't know. Okay, uh, algebraically would be to set these two equations equal to each other since they both equal y. Okay, that would be like taking one side of the equation, 15x, and setting it equal to the other side of the other equation plus 10x, and then solving for x. That's what they mean when they say solve it algebraically. Again, I don't, I don't particularly care that you, you like that method or anything like it. If you have the equations, as far as I'm concerned, we can go straight to the calculator with the equations and get the solution. Okay, So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Go back to the calculator. I'm going to clear out the old equations that we've got. Uh, we have an equation of 15x. So there's that. Uh, the other equation was, what was it, 30 plus 10x. 30 plus 10x. Okay, I'm going to hit zoom standard because I know I messed up my window a few minutes ago. And there go the two lawn service companies. Obviously, the intersection is somewhere off the top of my calculator screen. I'm just going to zoom out. Option number three in the zoom menu. Hit enter, and they are getting awfully close together at the top of the screen, but I do believe they're still off the top of the screen. So we're going to zoom out a little bit further, and it appears that we've got an intersection somewhere a third of the way up the positive y-axis, maybe half the way up the positive y-axis, and I can't really see it. So now I'm going to zoom back in, option number two. Okay, and on the zoom in, in, okay, kind of good to move your cursor where you want to zoom back in on, otherwise it's going to just look at the origin again. Okay, looks like I might have missed my guess a little bit. I believe the intersection is up here almost at the top of the screen. I'll take another look at it right about in there. Yeah, it does appear that we have an intersection right about in the middle of the screen. My little plus cursor is almost on it. So I'm going to go second, calculate, intersect. Okay, the Xbox cursor is right there in the center. Looks pretty good. Let's see if the calculator can figure it out. And it did. Okay, 690. X equals 6, Y equals 90. 
Okay, so there's the solution. Technically, that would be your solution, 6 comma 90. Okay, and what does that mean? What does X represent? Okay, well, X represented the number of hours that had to be worked. Okay, and uh, Y represented the total cost. So when the total cost is $90, okay, the total cost is $90 when they've each worked six hours. That's where they balance out. D says explain uh, how to determine when it would be better to use Green Grass Incorporated and when it would be better to use their competitor, SNG Lawn Care. This is a perfect opportunity to use your chart. You can, you can kind of see what's going on in the chart. Now, just kind of start off at the beginning of the chart here, okay? We know it goes up to like six hours before they start to become equal. So look at less than six hours. Which one is cheaper when we're looking at the smaller number of hours? Okay, $15 here for green grass, $40 for SNG, $30 for green grass, $50 for SNG. So green grass is the better deal as long as the job doesn't take a real long time. Okay. But as we just discovered, once you get to six hours worth of time, their graphs are going to pass each other. Okay, So green grass was cheaper for less than six hours. Okay, but What's going to happen after that? I don't know. Could we even see it in the graph? Yeah, we could see. Actually, we could see that. Look right there. Didn't even really notice it. There was that 90 and 90. They were balanced when uh, the total number of hours would have been six. They just didn't mark it in the graph that way. And then look what happened as you get past six hours. Green grass 105, S and G only 100. Okay, so to finish off their question, green grass is cheaper for less than six hours. S and G cheaper for more than six hours. And this is what systems of equations is about. It's about using the graphs that you have in order to make determinations, answer questions about what is happening with the system, what is more beneficial for one company or another. This is this is the way the business world operates. Okay. There's one more type of question I want to look at, and it's called a mixture problem. Okay, but as you're going to see, it's in a lot of ways, it's not a whole lot different from the other types of problems we've been seeing. Okay, the uh, bullet's there, and again, take some notes if you feel like you need to. Uh, set up two equations in standard form. That's a little bit different. Okay, we're used to seeing slope-intercept form. Okay, where y equals mx plus b. Standard form is where you have all your variables on one side of the equation and all of your non-variables on the other side. Okay, so x's and y's or whatever variables you have on the left, constants on the right. Okay, then they suggest that we manually solve by elimination or by calculator. Okay, uh, I'm going to suggest to you that it's not as complicated as they're trying to make it right there. Let's have a look at the problem. Felix has a bug collection consisting of beetles and spiders. He has 75 bugs in all. Altogether, they have 526 legs. Identify the variables. Write the equation representing total bugs. Write an equation representing total legs. Solve the system to find the number of beetles and the number of spiders in the collection. Okay, well that sounds pretty complicated. Let's see what we can figure out here. Okay, identify the variables. Let's see, Felix has a bug collection consisting of beetles and spiders. Okay, sound like those guys ought to be the variables? Seems pretty reasonable. Okay, so we'd probably just assign these guys uh, X and Y and see what happens from there. He has 75 bugs in all. What equation could we write from that? 75 bugs in all, what, what does that mean? Yeah, it's the total. It's That's what the something equals. Okay, what does it equal? It equals 75, but what equals 75? Yeah, all the bugs, X and Y. Okay, so whatever X is and whatever Y is, we're going to add them up. That equals 75. Altogether, they have 526 legs. Okay, on this second equation... We need to figure out how to get the leg information into the problem. Now, it says they have 526 legs, so it's pretty clear that we have something going on that equals 526. 
Now it's also pretty clear that we have some information about X being added together to some information about Y, but we probably need to apply what's happening with the legs, okay, for each of these different styles of critters, so we can find out what actually equals 526. Well, X, we'd identified up here as the number of beetles. So I guess we're going to assume that ladybugs are beetles and that beetles have six legs each. So six legs times each number of beetles added together with, and we have spiders. Okay, why is spiders? And pretty clear, I think everybody knows, spiders have eight legs. Okay, so six legs for each beetle plus eight legs for each spider, and that equals 526. Okay, now write, a to write an equation representing total number of bugs. Okay, well, total number of bugs is the X plus Y equals 75. They say that we should leave this in standard form. Okay, that's fine if that's what they want. Personally, I would rather have it in slope-intercept form so that we can ask our calculator what's going on. So what I would do is I would subtract X from both sides of this little equation right there, and that would leave us with Y equals negative X. Did not do a good job of writing down what I was saying negative x plus 75. That looks like one of our equations. <clears throat> now the other equation is going to be a little bit trickier to deal with because there's more stuff in it. Okay, But it works still the same way. The first thing we would want to do is we'd want to get y by itself, which means these six x's do not need to be there. So we'd subtract six x's from both sides. That would leave you with eight y's on the left, negative six x's, plus 526 on the right. Okay, one more step to do in this case, we have eight y's. We don't want eight y's, we just want one y. Okay, so our next step would be to divide that eight out of there and see what that leaves us. Okay, well eight divided by eight on the left, that's just gonna leave you with the y, that's good. Okay, negative eight, six divided by eight, it's just a fraction, okay, and that's going to be slope, our number in front of x, okay, slope is going to be a fraction, you can reduce it if you'd, if you'd like, if you notice that that's negative three over four, that's good, okay, or you could leave it as negative six over eight, the calculator does not care if your fractions are reduced or not, okay, and then 526 divided by eight, uh, let's take a look at that, that goes in 60, um, what is that? That would go in 48 times, leave 46, that would be 65, and uh, 3 fourths. Okay, my board is kind of messed up over here on the side. Let's see if I can't write that a little clearer. 65 and 3 fourths. Okay, so there are the two equations, and again, if you didn't even want to figure out the 65 and 3 fourths, you could have left it as 526 over 8. The calculator does not care, okay? It, it'll deal with the numbers exactly the way you put them in there. D says solve the system to find the number of beetles and the number of spiders in the collection. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's go back into our equation editor here, clear, clear get rid of both of those. One of the equations was negative x plus 75. And the other equation was what? Negative 3 fourths x. Ah. I need to pull my calculator out. The board's so bad on that side. I can't get the right buttons. Negative 3 fourths x and then 65 and 3 fourths plus 65 and 3 fourths. Okay. Now, when I do zoom standard, somebody want to tell me if this is going to be in the screen or not? Look at the y intercepts 75, 65. Is it going to be in my normal screen? It's not. It's going to be way above. Okay. So I shouldn't expect to really see anything at all. Maybe a tail end of one of the lines and we didn't really see anything. So I'm going to zoom out. Zoom three, Let's see if we get it. Yeah, there's one of the lines. And yeah, can't really see anything that's going on there. So hit enter again to zoom out again. There goes one, there goes the other. Ah, we get an intersection in quadrant one sitting right in there. Okay, so second calculate, intersect. 
move my X cursor over there near the intersection. Get it close. Enter, enter, enter. And either I hit a button wrong or I killed my calculator. Doesn't appear to be doing anything. Let's see what happens here. Try it again. All right. Enter, enter, enter. There we go. 37 and 38. X is 37. Y is 38. Let's see what we got there. X is 37. Y is 38. So the solution is 37, 38. And it said solve the system, number of beetles, number of spiders. Well, there you go. There were your beetles because we gave them the X value. And there are the spiders because we gave them the Y value. Now, folks, if I had to place a bet on uh, if they were to give you some systems of equations on your end of year testing, that they are probably going to give us at least one of our two equations if not both of our equations in such a way that they're not already set up in slope intercept form. They are going to make you solve the equation for y because they know you have your calculator. They know you have your calculator and they know the calculator can solve it for you. So the only test of your skills would be to take either one or both of those equations and have to put them in slope intercept form yourself. Okay, in order to put it in the equation. And quite honestly, that's the kind of stuff that we had trouble with in Unit 6. If I gave you the equation, y'all were good to go. Y'all could get the answers left and right all day long. But if the equation wasn't already in slope-intercept form, that's where we started having the trouble. Okay, So we have to pay close attention to our solving. Okay, But that is the way solving systems of equations works. That is the application of it, getting from the word problems to the equation so that we can solve it. Okay, so next um, I've got uh, some worksheets that have a few different application type problems. We are going to see if we can't set up some systems ourselves and then solve them from there.